Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I have a special guest on today, and we're talking about how to make the shifts in a relationship without the other person doing anything. We are going to dive into how we create our emotions, why we go to certain emotions and behaviors again and again, even when it doesn't feel good. And most importantly, we're going to talk about how to stop doing this. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. I work with women who are smart and successful in many areas in their life, but they haven't quite conquered their weight yet. If you are done feeling like a prisoner in your own body, watching life pass you by because of your weight and are looking to feel freedom around food, way less mind drama, feel more relaxed and calm while losing weight, and know exactly how to keep it off for good, let's set up a call. Working with me, you're going to learn how to eat the foods that you love, move your body in the ways that you like, and understand why you do what you do or don't do. Don't let your weight hold you back any longer. It can be easy and simple, and I'd love to show you how. I can promise you there is an easier and simple way, and it doesn't have to be hard or time-consuming to lose the weight. So if you're ready to learn more, schedule your discovery call at shapeitupfitness.com slash call. All right. So my special guest comes from over the pond. I love saying that. Um, She is a relationship coach, a public speaker, a wife, mother, and she works with you on all your relationships, not just the intimate one. So welcome, Naomi Stonier, did I say it right? <laughs> yeah, good enough. Yay. Good enough for me. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm so excited. I love having people on who are not in the United States because it just shows the power of the podcast and how we are all connected all across the world and still just boggles my mind that we can, you know, go on a camera and communicate like millions and millions of miles away. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So tell everyone a little bit about yourself and like how you got started in your business. Well, thank you so much for the introduction. My name is Naomi Stonia. I'm a relationship coach. And like you say, I work with you on all your relationships, not just the intimate one, because it's one of the greatest keys to success, happiness and fulfillment. When we have great relationships with all the key people in our lives... It's the foundation from which we thrive. So I love that people say, well, it's not possible to have great relationships with everyone. And I love it when they say that because my passion is showing you how to make the shifts without anyone else doing the work. Um, Because this is my journey. Um, This is why I'm so passionate about it because when we believe a relationship can't change because of the other person it's a very disempowering place to be mm. when we believe we've uh, we've got two options suffer in it put up with it or cut this person out of my life it is very disempowering and this stuff sneaks into every other area so it will show up in our friendships, in our parenting, in the amount of work success we have, literally in amount, the amount of happiness we're able to enjoy. And this was my experience. So dysfunctional relationships from childhood, taking them forward, it showed up in every area of my life. I went on an infertility journey that turned out to be my gift because not, you know, my dream was a great big family that was one of the ways I was going to be meeting my needs so even mm-hmm. after one child I was so lucky to have a beautiful daughter but the you know the blueprint was a big family but not getting that then I was forced to take a look at how I was meeting my needs and how I was showing up in my relationships and I went on a journey to take back control in my relationships, to shift my experiences without anybody else doing anything. And when I gained the ability to choose what I want to think and feel, regardless of what someone else is doing, they can carry on being their same old tricky self. I was not being affected by it anymore. It 
was such an empowering experience. The confidence flooded into every other area of my life. I left a job I'd been in for 15 years. We left London. We moved our family to Italy. We started our own businesses. I mean, our lives are just, you know, it's like the difference between night and day. So that's my experience. And, you know, now I teach others how to do it. That's incredible. I love that. Um, I know for me in my own journey, when I realized that one, I could think whatever I wanted to, and two, I could change and not have the other person change. That was huge. I was like, what? Wait a minute. They are the one that's, they have to change to make me happy. Right. (laughs) And that's not, it's fascinating. It's fascinating how that all works together. It's exactly what you're doing with weight, isn't it? The weight becomes the thing that you focus on. I can't be happy until I've lost the weight. And I just, what you do resonates so much for me that I'm going to teach you how to do this in a way of your choosing that you have control over. Oh, I just love it. It resonates so much for me. Yeah, because I mean, most people, and I'm sure it's the same way over where you are, is like, you know, you're expected to have a diet, you're expected to like restrict and like, who wants to be on a diet for the rest of their lives? Who wants to like restrict their foods? Who like, we're meant to enjoy life. Yes, there are some consequences. Obviously, if you eat everything at the buffet table, you know, there's going to be a consequence, but (laughs) it all ties into like the mindset of like, why are you eating everything that's on the buffet table? Why are you not stopping yeah, when you're it. full? How are you not fueling your body? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it, isn't it? And it, what I work on with people, which is will be exactly the same as you. I don't work on, we, I must stop, I must change. I work on awareness. Yeah. So we don't change what we're doing and stop it. We become aware, start adding new things in and just those old ways that weren't serving us just naturally drop away. Right, right. Yeah, but I think part of the problem is, is that we are so used to hearing those conditionings, those limiting beliefs that we just, they're just true. And you don't realize it unless you work with a coach, unless you work with someone who's like, wait a minute, <laughs> did you hear what you just said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's dive into the topic. So let's talk about how we create our emotions. Wow, it's so simple. Of course, it's, it doesn't feel easy, but it is so simple. And what I do is I just break it down into our emotions are made up of our focus, our physiology and our language. It really is that simple. And what I help people to do is in the moment I give, I give them, I teach them the ability to break it down. So when I ask someone, how are you creating your emotion? They say, well, I have no idea. I just bang, I'm in it. We've been running these patterns for decades often. And they, and this stuff whizzes past so quickly, it's, it's unconscious. So I give people the ability to catch it in the moment. And that is understanding how simple it is. It is, what is your body doing? drop into your body Mm. where does the tension start what is it is it a headache is it a tightness in your chest I ask them what language are you using um what we have to understand is we silently talk to ourselves we have things that we say to ourselves over and over again and when we've been doing it for years it will be unconscious you know I'm so stupid you know Mm -hmm. I never get it right I'll never be happy for you it'll be I'm I'm fat and ugly you know and this will be happening entirely unconsciously so it takes a little while to catch it what the things we are saying to ourselves you know the language we are using I have to I must I need to it's creating emotion it really does matter what we say and of course our focus what are we focusing on? What do we believe in the moment? What are we choosing to believe in the moment? This is how we create our emotions. And people just don't want to believe it's this simple, but it really is. And I, but of course it's not easy. And so where I come in is helping you catch what's going on in the moment, unlayer it, break it down. And then we look at ways of breaking the pattern, nipping it in the bud. Yeah, I love that um, because I think a lot of people, I know when I coach people, 
I'm very into like listening to what they're saying and seeing if it's congruent to, you know, what they think they're saying kind of almost. Yes. And yeah. And, um, you know, like even how you were saying, like, when you think, oh, I'm stupid, like every day as you go through your day, um, like, you know, people are like, oh, I lost my keys again, dumb me, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And we say these things um, like self uh, what is it? Self-deprecating humor. Yeah. Like we think it's funny, but like when that adds up over time, yes. I mean, you, you, now you're, you believe it. Like there's some yeah. level of your subconscious that you believe that you're stupid or, or you're overweight and you can never lose weight or whatever, you know, or you suck at relationships, you know, <laughs> Yeah. And you'll pick it up. So the the patterns that people around you were running, you we are sponges soaking it in. You know, I was with a client just before this call where this belief she has about herself, I was questioning, is this your belief? Mm -hmm. Who around you was thinking this? You know, do you think these are your thoughts? Or maybe you've just learned them off someone, someone else and you're repeating them. Let's get really curious about this. And with love, because this is a never ending cycle, can we catch this stuff and break the cycle so it doesn't get passed on to the next generation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been really diving into that like generational um, cycle because, you know, especially with weight loss, People that grew up in the 70s and 80s and 90s, they were taught by their parents who were taught by their parents on how to lose weight or how to look a certain way or, or what, how to, how to think eat. about yourself. Yeah. Body image. It's huge. And like, where does that end? Like as a parent, um, I mean, I have a son and a daughter and most, I think it's more girls than boys, but like you look at girls and you're like, when is it? going to end like when is the cycle going to end where you as the parents are accepting of your body image and yourself so you can allow your daughter to be accepting of themselves or sons you know and it's just it, you know if if you if you have trouble losing weight for yourself do it for your kids yeah well that, that's it you got it that's the leverage the cycle stops here yeah I'm going to do whatever it takes to unlayer and uncover this stuff and break these patterns. I love it. Yeah. So much. Yeah. So let's talk about why we go and do certain things over and over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this one because I know you, this will be so familiar to you. I know what I'm doing and I just can't stop. Mm -hmm. And this is such a painful place to be. And we have to understand that all behavior has a positive intent. So you wouldn't be doing it if it didn't benefit you in some way. Okay. And sometimes the behavior really served us once, it protected us once, um, but no longer is it serving us. And so being able to go on a process of thanking this behavior, not judging ourselves for it. And, uh, you know, I worked with a client uh, the, last week who so much judgment about not speaking up for herself. Mm -hmm. And when we were able to trace it back, the way that she grew up and the experiences she had as a young person, it was actually a really useful survival tool for her to keep quiet mm -hmm. and to navigate really tricky situations. So, being able to just really celebrate this amazing survival skill that she had. It takes the judgment off and saying, okay, but now we're going to change. Now we're going to adapt. So that's one way I work, but also we look at how it meets your needs. And I am a Tony Robbins trained coach and we work on six human needs, certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, growth, and contribution mm -hmm. these are the needs that all humans must meet and so whenever uh, I have we have a behavior that the client's working on we look at how it's meeting your needs and if it's meeting enough need you're going to keep doing it and you know one way or another we must meet our needs to survive these are not just desires or wants they're profound needs that we must meet to stay alive you know we must know we can be safe we must know where the next meal's coming from you know our brains need stimulation and variety these really you know a baby will not survive if it's not held we must have connections so yeah. 
but understanding that these behaviors really meet our needs in low grade ways if they don't feel good is is such a great way of separating yourself from the behavior um getting some distance and getting objective i mean for me the behavior was overwhelm you know so i had loads of certainty because i the pattern was very familiar so it's, i knew exactly how to do it so real certainty you get you know the roller coaster of overwhelm gave me loads of variety mm. being too busy gave me significance but and the, the fourth one which was a hard one to get was it was only when I got so overwhelmed that I crashed that was the only time I gave myself permission to stop when I was sick mm. or when I was so overwhelmed I would crawl into the bed eat ice cream and watch Netflix you know it's a low grade form of connection that was the only time I would care for myself yeah so no matter what what I changed outside of me I ran that pattern and it was only by understanding how it met my needs that I was able to break free of it yeah I love how you said about and I, I can't paraphrase it exactly but uh, the way I envision is like separating yourself from what you're doing so in the sense of like in my case, if you find yourself overeating, you're not like this horrible human being because you're overeating. You're just taking some actions because you have a thought like, and that, you know, I always talk to my clients about judgment because there is a lot of shame and judgment when it comes to being overweight and, you know, choosing the foods that you, feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Choosing the foods that you're quote unquote, not supposed to eat that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. And it's interesting, like to separate yourself, um, from the, the physicality of what you're doing as, as a human, you know, yeah. I, I, that's very fascinating. I love it's that. Crucial, isn't it? To yeah. get that distance and that perspective so you can actually see what you're doing. So you're just not just in it. Right. Like, it's not like you're on automatic pilot. Like you, you do have, once you become, this is what I love about mindset is like, once you become aware of the things that you're doing and the thoughts that are coming into your head and the way you feel about everything, it's like, it's like your own little Petri dish, your own little science experiment. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Why did I do that? Like, yes. What oh, the antidote <laughs> of curiosity. Yeah. The yeah. antidote, isn't it? I can sit in the funk or I can get curious. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, back to weight loss, it's like, you know, you, a lot of people are beating themselves up for no reason because you ate a sleeve of Oreos. You ate a sleeve of Oreos because of something else going on. Well, you know, for me, it's a low grade way to meet your needs. Right. You know, that Self whole side of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're eating it. You know, you get that love and connection that, oh, yeah, that you relax, but also, you know, the significance of the problem. Oh, I've eaten stuff again. The certainty, the familiarity of the problem. And then the, un so the variety is all those horrible emotions and you feel good for a bit and you crash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That whole, that whole emotional eating cycle of like, yeah. Cause especially nobody's grabbing broccoli when they're stressed. Like you're grabbing cookies, <laughs> you're grabbing sugar, something that's going to like spike up that dopamine hit and then crash you. And then you, yeah, you keep going up and down. Um, one of the other things you said earlier on too, is like, um, I, I know some women that I've worked with, they are uh, nervous about losing weight because they're afraid their husband's going to leave. Or, yeah. you know, or they're going to cheat on him because now they have this new sexy body oh, and they're yeah. like, don't know if they can control themselves. So Which, many parallels. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So, so sorry, finish what you were saying. No, no, that was it. That was it. <laughs> but because it's so fascinating because people often a fear when they come to work on their relationships is um, they're scared of what they may find. They, they're scared if they change, if they do the work, they may not end up liking their partner anymore that is one of the real mm. reasons so it's exactly the same fear isn't it yeah that if I change and I become slim and sexy I might go off and have an affair it's, people have exactly the same fear what if I work on this relationship and find out I no longer want it anymore better to just let sleeping dogs lie and just stay in the funk <laughs> yeah, yeah. Safe yeah. It's the safest place to be yeah yeah why bother <laughs> It's safe not to bother, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I always love going to the, I, I want it to call worst case scenario. So like, I always tell people like, well, not that I'm dealing with relationships in that sense, but I would be like, so what if you get divorced? Then yeah. what? You're going to be fine. Yeah. You know, <laughs> 
And who knows, you could lose the weight and it could be the most incredible relationship you have. We always have these choices of like what our future is going to be. And we always go to like the crappy version. Like this is going to suck. We're and program this is too, aren't we? Yeah. This is yeah. survival tactic to catastrophe. Stay in your well, little case cave. Scenario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell everyone how to stop doing this. Because I think this is the most important part. <laughs> it's really simple. Start on awareness. That's all we have to do is just sit with, let me just get very aware. And the trick here, because the brain takes you to the biggest thing. Don't start with awareness with the biggest problem in your life, Mm -hmm. because that's Mount Everest. And there's a reason the brain's taking you to Mount Everest, because then you'll give up and you'll stay (laughs) in safety. So start small, start checking in with your focus, your physiology and your language when you miss the bus when it's raining and you didn't get take an umbrella you know these tiny little moments we run these patterns big and small so when we're sitting in the traffic jam and we're late for that meeting that pattern will trigger and it'll go all the way down to well I'll never be a success at anything because I can't get to a meeting on time so we're running the patterns everywhere so you want to start small to um to just start paying attention to oh what was that thought oh you know we can start seeing the warning signs of when the pattern is broken uh, when the pattern is triggered and then we get to breaking it and for me no behavior has been off the table one of my special I mean I'm a Tony Robbins trained coach the guy does crazy stuff to break patterns and it works for me back in the day when I was in a job that I found very difficult and challenging and I would frequently be at the point of could I be bursting into tears in the middle of the office and I would go to the toilet and I would jump around like I'd won the lottery and so I didn't believe I'd won the lottery I I mined all the actions of winning the lottery so yes yes great and my brain I was thinking I hate this this is you know whatever but it it shocked my body out of the system uh, out of the out of the pattern and you know I was back from the brink of crying in the office so it was it literally just distracting that survival brain out of that pattern and you can just get really inventive with this stuff Yeah. I, um, I just find the brain is fascinating because like in the sense of like, we, we kind of are having a couple, you know, there's voices in our heads, you know, there's a voice that talks to us all day long and one, we don't always want to hang out with (laughs) the other one is like our hopes and dreams and stuff like that. And having the ability to like, not think that you're crazy in the sense of like, okay, brain, like I'm always, I always like to take my brain to the extreme because I know it likes the extreme. Yeah. Like it likes yeah, worst case scenario. Go there. Yeah. Just let Stop it go. Resisting it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And just being like, so uh, one of the things that I talk about with cravings is like allowing yourself to tell yourself I can eat the entire cake if I want to. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Because once you do that and you believe it, you have to believe it. But once you do that, you're like, I don't really want the whole cake. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting because I never allowed any sugar in the house because I couldn't control myself. Mm. So the way I didn't eat sugar was I didn't have it in the house, but I, I was making it such an illicit substance for my daughter that I went on this journey to fill the house with chocolate and sugar and just, you know, can I just choose not to eat this stuff? And it was so interesting what came up for me. And it was just all about me believing I didn't have control over this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Any, anytime a client of mine really like has this, like their claws in a, a, a food I'm like, they're like, I got to get it out of the house. I'm like, no, you need it in the house. You need it in front of your face and sit and enjoy all the emotions that you're going to, and all the thoughts that are going to start swirling around in your head, because that's the work. It's not avoiding it. It's not getting it out of the house. It's not, you know, avoiding it at parties. It's here's here's the discomfort of wanting it. Yeah. 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 It's like aversion therapy, I guess. (laughs) Love it. Ah, um, anything else on how to stop doing it or we pretty much wrap that up? Oh, yeah. you know, obviously I could talk for hours. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> I like to just 
keep it really simple. Yeah. Just, just, just those three things is, is all, all it takes if you just commit to paying attention to that. That yeah. is the crucial first step. Yeah, awareness is so important. Yeah. All right, so you can you tell everyone where to find you? Absolutely. So I'm on Facebook all day long, Naomi Stonier, S-T-O-N-I-E-R on Facebook. I have Plumo Coaching, P-L-U-M-O, plumocoaching.com that's my website I do one-to-one consults you can get on the phone with me for an hour and I'll take you through the entire journey of what you need to do to get where you want to go Um, it gives you a great idea of what relationship coaching can do for you I do a monthly workshop um, and that's all on Facebook I'm also on LinkedIn Naomi Stone you're on LinkedIn I post a lot of content I give a lot of, of, of value on both those sites. So okay. you can catch me on there. Awesome. And if you didn't catch those links, they will be in the show notes. They'll also be at the shapeitupfitness.com website under all the podcasts. Just look for Naomi's episode. All right. So we are going to dive into the lightning round. Everybody's favorite, but not the guests. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Bring it up. All right. Do you like coffee or tea? Oh my God. I love them both. I'm British. Now, well, I've got to go with coffee. Really? I was, you know, as I was saying the question, I was like, she's going to pick tea because she's British. Oh, my morning coffee. I love tea, but oh, my morning coffee. I love coffee too. I, I don't think I could live without coffee. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. What is your favorite color and why? Oh my God, that's so difficult. It's got to be blue, various shades of blue and gray. And I can't tell you why. (laughs) I just love it. I, my favorite is royal blue. I love royal blue. I just think it is the best color. I think too, when I wear it, it brings out my eyes. So that's probably my why, but I've um, I've got a couple of vintage blues that I just love. And I paint all my furniture in that color. Oh, cool. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. That's <laughs> a decorate furniture. That's really cool. Is that a side job or is that just a hobby? Just a hobby. Just I love upcycling. Oh, cool. Very cool. Um, all right. Let's see. I have a list of questions and I kind of just pick them. Ooh. Okay. Um, what? This is kind of silly. What is your favorite song to sing in the shower? Oh my God, I don't know the names of songs, but I live in a house where people are obsessed with music. I mean, it would have to be like a Tina Turner. Or, no, no, it'd have to be a Beatles song, like Blackbird by the Beatles. Oh, I love that one. But yeah, there's constant music in this house. We're, we're never silent. We are a musical household. Musical family, that's awesome. That's awesome. I have to say just before I go on an interview, turn that down. Right. Turn it down. No background music. <laughs> Copyright infringement. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. So let's wrap this up. Is there any one like takeaway or anything that you want to leave the audience with before we wrap up? Well, my favorite go to saying is other people cannot create their emotions. And, you know, if you just, if the one thing you do is just sit with that, because that one sentence alone can be such a trigger. And mm. if, if that triggers you, oh, I really, really urge you to get curious. Because if nobody can create my emotions, I am in complete control. And it's the most powerful place to be. So I just always offer that to anyone who's struggling. And they usually want to smack me. <laughs> Because we're conditioned to be like, you hurt little Susie's feelings and yeah. or Susie hurt my feeling. No, no one can hurt your feelings but you. Yeah, we're programmed to just get this out of ourselves and blame it on somebody else. You know, it's no judgment. You are programmed to blame. It's, you know, your brain wants to get you out of the pain and put it on somebody else. So <laughs> it's so normal, but it will change everything if you shift that thought. Yeah, I love that. And that is, I I can attest to that too, just personally. (laughs) Like once you figure that out, you're like, wow, okay, let's game on, let's go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, Naomi, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast today. I really enjoyed this conversation and I know that it's going to be very helpful to many people. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. All right, everybody. If you love this episode, please leave a review on Apple podcast. Written review would be ideal because then the beauty magic of the algorithm gets boosted up and this podcast gets shared all over the world. And I think people really need to hear this message, you know, about mindset and different aspects of our lives and how it affects us. So definitely leave a written review. And that is all for us today. Have a beautiful day and I will talk to you next time.